What's going on, gang? It's your guy, Bola, just checking in. Hope everybody's enjoying the start today. day. Happy Venus Day. Happy Friday, all right? You know, let's make sure we don't do too much with our pleasures and who and what we love on our Fridays, okay? We always got to make sure that jumping into the weekend with this frequency vibration. Just want to jump into some energies real quick to cap off for the weekend, all right? The moon just moved into Virgo, guys. We know when the moon moves into Virgo, when the moon is in the earth sign, that brings a whole dose of reality, all right, to uh, our present circumstances. We're being, you know, forced to slow up, deal with more patience right now. We got a lot of energies that got us going a bit crazy. Mars in Gemini, all right, Aries and Venus, um, the sun and Venus in Aries. Okay, these energies is all masculine. They don't got time to sit back, think, and wait. They just want to push out. Mars and Gemini want to think, but it's thinking rapidly. It's thinking aggressively. It, it, it it may, it's catching thoughts and it's not placing that much uh, and, uh, time into soaking in on the thought. It's just pushing it out with force, all right? Possibly ignorance at time, all right? We we all, uh, you know, prone to deal with positive and negative spectrums of these energies, all right? I've been harping on, you know, the madness of Mars and Gemini, but there's a bunch of positive um you know energies to that placement that i've been emphasizing as much as how much we're able to pick up information about the things we're creatively into how much information we're able to pick up on our passions on certain intentions we have a lot of us right now have certain things that we've been planning to do certain intentions all right certain deep desires aka your mars and you haven't acted on them yet you haven't pushed them out yet but ever since mars got in gemini you done started gaining so much new information on how you could deal with your creativity how you could deal with what you're working on how you could deal with what you're passionate about all right so my bad to all you mars and gemini's out there i ain't trying to shoot down you sign but we got to keep it all right gemini is such a it's such a quick paced energy because it's air is dealing with the thoughts you can't trap air and when you throw mars in there it's very aggressive direct and it's impatient so a lot of us are impatient with the way that we communicate right now and a lot of us feel real individual with the way we have to express our thoughts right now so you know that's just that but uh, with all these energies with the moon transiting Virgo, now this is an influence for us to deal with more, uh, you know, be more present with our personal circumstances right now. All right. The moon transiting Earth is going to influence a dose of reality, practicality, organization, structure. All right. We jumping into more of a linear way of thinking. OK, not not getting so lost in the emotion, but being able to look at things to see what makes sense. Okay, how we about to work on things, how we about to schedule and organize things. So this moon transit is really helping us to deal with more reality before we get into this full moon and Libra transit. We're still dealing with early stages of Aries, um, Aries season. You know, the sun is six degrees. So Virgo and Aries actually are in conjunct. All right. Uh, in conjunction are when uh, two planets are 150 degrees away from each other. Aries being the first sign and Virgo being the sixth sign are naturally 150 degrees away from each other. And the next sign, Libra, is opposite from Aries. So that's 180 degrees away from each other. So when we look at in conjunctions, it's almost the opposite, okay? So it can manifest minor frictions, all right? Minor misunderstandings, some clashes here and there, okay? So, you know, when it comes to Aries, once again, we know Aries is you know, spontaneous, acts off the thrill of things, acts off their vision. They trust their gut instinct, very individual, real creative. Don't deal with restriction and authority well, all right? They like to be the authority of what they're doing. They like to feel like the leaders. Anything under that can feel very vulnerable for Aries. But for the most part, Aries are on the go. And a lot of times, they don't feel like they need a whole, you know, huge plan or they need or they don't feel like they need to put a lot of time into you know what needs to be organized before they act on something they just go with the uh you know the feel and the potential of things and they learn on their journey they learn on their actions this is why aries are able to endure a lot because they just go through the uh trenches they go through the experience they don't care to learn from others. They, they're the I am. So they're just going to express and act on what they see. And then the experience they gain from what they, uh, whatever they're trying to accomplish, that's how they led, you know, through their own experience. So Aries are more so, if an Aries is a teacher, they're going to teach through their action a lot of the times, maybe not so much verbally expressing themselves, all right? They're action oriented. 
Virgos deal with organization, deals with planning. You're not going to really see a Virgo that's just so spontaneous and, you know, uh, you know, influenced to just jump and do things without any uh, form of planning, structure, detail, direction, navigation, resources. Make sure we bring in all the resources wherever we're going. Yeah, Virgo is, is planning all of that, right? It's Earth ruled by Mercury, dealing with the details, the intellect. So, these two signs, they be create, they be clashing a little bit, okay? They be clashing. Virgos be trying to tell Aries, like, yo, you're creative as hell. Do you know where you could get if you added some more planning and structure to things? Aries be telling Virgo, like, shit, you'd be getting from point A to B quicker if you, if you moved more, if you acted more, if you expressed more. So now this is where we got to find the balance um, leading into this full moon and Libra energy. There's going to be situations that we're going to under be influenced with the moon and Virgo to be more in the present, to be more practical, to be more patient with. But that sun and Aries energy is going to want to push out energies in an aggressive way. You know, we're going to feel like we need to work on certain things with the moon transiting Virgo, but we could do it in a real impatient, direct and have a lack of compromise of who we may be working with and how our individuality or the way we want to personally work on things or personally get things done. We may not be conscious of how that affects people in our environment around us. So this is how we have to find a balance. We have to be a little bit more practical about how we dealing with, uh, you know, these new things that we given birth to in the early age, uh, early stages of airy season. Okay. You know, moving into the weekend, you just want to go over all of your responsibilities that you know you need to take care of this weekend throughout the full moon and Libra transit. So after that, you don't get caught up saying, damn, I wish I prepped myself a little bit, taking care of certain serious, practical priorities and responsibilities in my life before the full moon and Libra, because now I feel like I'm dealing with a whole lot that I need to detach and release because we know the full moon is dealing with detaching and releasing, even though it's not in Libra yet. Okay. It's still close to being full transiting Virgo. So we are still dealing with a high influence of emotion as this moon transits Virgo. So people can be a bit tense right now when it comes to things that they're working on and trying to schedule and organize. And this is not really the time to play with people moods or act like, you know, it. Uh, like this is a time where you got to be able to read people's temperament and emotions and see if, you know, if you could come around them all jolly and positive, because some people may be real focused on the things that they trying to structure and build real focus right now on bringing some organization to their life, real focus on not feeling scattered and understanding how to get pinpointed with their priorities and what they're working on. So, you know, Aries energy, Mars and Gemini could have us be uh, real spontaneous once again with the way we express ourselves. So we need to be careful what we say to others because we don't really know what type of time people are on right now with people being real serious about things dealing with career, organization in their life, forms of security, okay? And all this super uh, charged up Mars, Aries energy is really a lack of patience for a lot of things. You know, people are jumping to anger and frustration quick as, as, as passionate and excited people are. All right. To accomplish certain things is as quick as people are meeting anger and frustration. So Mars and Gemini, we just got to be careful that how we communicate and deal with certain people. Be careful how you assume certain things, assume, pre -ass assuming certain things right now could get you caught up in certain situations. Remember, it ain't a full moon in Virgo, but it's close to being uh, it's a lot. It's close to being at that peak while transiting Virgo. So people don't want to really hear the uh, critique right now. People don't really want to hear from others what they should be working on, working on. People don't want to be bossed around. People don't want to take orders right now. This energy don't want to deal with that. OK, we want to be the individual boss for, them, for ourselves. Everybody's feeling like being an individual authority. OK, and the moon through Virgo transit is going to influence influence us to take care of what we got to take care of to get organized in our life right now. So this is like what that energy is going to play out. Um, it's important to understand that we have the moon in Virgo is going to be squaring Mars in Gemini. So expect certain clashes, mental distractions when it comes to what you're working on, especially in the workplace with your coworkers. You got to see these guys. You got to see these things. You know, you got to see the temperament build up with certain clashes with certain people, especially in the workplace. So, you know, not to feed it. So, you know, you not, you know, not to match people and bring yourself down to their level. 
All right, you gotta be able to see above these things. So, you know, Mars is our passions, but it's in Gemini, so it's dealing with people. And the moon and Virgo is influencing us to react to our, to our responsibilities. So it may be a lot of things dealing with people and other people intentions, what other people want, what other people passions are and how they're connected to us. And they may start to clash with what we're trying to work on right now. So we could feel real frustrated dealing with others while we're trying to deal with our own schedule and uh, priorities and responsibilities over the weekend. Be patient with these people if you bump into these things. All right. You know. A lot of people right now are so passionate about either connecting things with others, working with others in a certain way. So we got to be mindful of that because airy season is about being an individual. But when you have Mars and Gemini, it's real aggressive and passionate about, you know, exchanging the creativity, about, you know, correlating its passions with others. And we got to be very mindful of deciphering what you got to do by yourself, you know, and then how you could be open to interacting with others in certain areas. There's a lot of energies we got to find the balance of right now when it comes to relationships and self-expression. But overall, it's airy season. So self-priorities is high priority. All right. Now, uh, we got sun sextile Saturn. Um, When we got the sun sextile Saturn, we're going to see new ways to bring structure and stability in our life, especially with things navigating, with us navigating our career area of life. So not only do we have a moon through Virgo transit, which is going to always influence forms of career security and stability, you know, with sun squaring Saturn, we're going to see new things that we could put restrictions on, new things that we could place more time into. All right. We know Saturn deal with that construction like energy, building things up, breaking things back down in order to get from point A to B in an according way uh, and um, accordingly to do things effectively, to do things in a timely, organized manner. It's Saturn. It don't do shortcuts. All right. So we're going to see new ways in order to uh, stabilize things, break things down, do construction work in our life and possibly career opportunities, uh, opportunities to get to the bag, business opportunities in some type of shape or form. Saturn always wants to build and when it aligns with the sun in a positive alignment like this, we're going to be able to see new things or possibly create opportunities to take action on things to help us bring stability. Okay, guys. So, uh, be careful of allowing others to rile up your emotions during this time. Once again, when we get into this full moon and Libra transit, this energy is going to deal with us deciphering, filtering our relationships. Once again, filtering our relationships and the people in our life and also being conscious of the ways we personally connect to others on a one-on-one -on -one level. The way we may be open or closed off to connecting to others and seeing how that plays out as a detriment with what we're working on or how we've been, you know, be, we've had balance in that area with our personal life and our relationships to the way that it's been supporting and complementing, you know, the things in our personal life. All right, family. So you already know what it is. It's your guy, Boy Like Libra, tuning in and tuning out.